In a similar way to the first episode of this series, I'm not quite sure what to think about this episode after the fact. There's a lot in terms of story progression, but there wasn't much that really hit with me and enveloped me in the story and the characters like the last episode. Last episode was much more about teases and the buildup of the story, and the payoff here fell flat in most aspects. The big thing here is the confirmation that the machine being created was to turn them all into Super Skrulls. We get a better look at it early on in the episode, and then Gravit goes on to pretty much just explain his entire plan for world domination. It fit within the story context, but the dialogue still rambled on for me and felt forced and too laid out for the audience. For a series like this that is supposed to thrive on mystery and suspense, I don't like how we as an audience are finding all of this out in such a quick and simple way, rather than having to theorize and piece it together ourselves over a span of weeks. I think leaning into the mystery side of the series would get a lot more fans behind it, because I have noticed that their overall response each week is fairly split, and I personally keep going back and forth, because there are good moments, but also a lot that I haven't found myself caring about all that much. And then later on in the episode, when Graphic is stabbed in the hand by Talos, the reveal that the machine has already been used to give him extremist powers was made to be very subtle in a blink and you'll miss it moment. We know from the trailer footage that Graphic will also have Groot's powers and use them during some sort of action sequence later on, but I expect the first on-screen Super Scroll to have a bit more focus and epicness to it than just his hand healing, like maybe the power coming out in a life or death situation, or seeing the machine used on the first scroll. The good thing about Gravik's explanation though was that it really didn't make it seem bad for Fury and the humans, like this was a plan already in motion that couldn't be stopped. Except they do succeed in stopping it later on in the episode. The tension was built up nicely here, and I did enjoy the good cop bad cop with Fury and Talos. Sometimes their partnership can be a bit of a headache, like during the car ride to the house. It was full of good backstory on how Fury and the Skrulls worked together after they came to Earth, but eventually the arguing does get old. I just feel like sometimes I couldn't care less about any of these characters. The acting is good for the most part, and I do enjoy a lot of graphic scenes. He makes for a really good villain in the series, but there isn't anything that really makes me care about these other characters. Right now I'm more interested in the story and how it'll turn out for the Skrulls and humans as a whole, rather than how these characters are going to end up, which I guess isn't completely a bad thing, but I don't think it's an ideal situation. Because when something happens like Gaia's death, I pretty much felt nothing other than shock. Between Maria Hill's death and Gaia's here, this series has shown that nobody is safe. But other than my complete surprise that they killed off Amelia Clark's character after only three episodes, it wasn't like I cared about this character to the point where I felt any overwhelming feeling of sadness or grief. That's part of where I think this series could have been better. In a series that focuses on an alien species blending in with the human population, I feel that they could have made us really care for some of these characters by showing what it is exactly that makes us human, that makes us different than some alien species that can adopt our face, our voice, and our memories. There's got to be more to us than that, and I think they could have really made us attach ourselves onto the story and some of these characters, to the point where the deaths hit a little harder. This episode also had little to no action in it, which made the pacing somewhat of an issue for me. As a whole, this series has had very little action to it, and while this isn't something that I completely mind, I think it's still possible to have an interesting and engaging story without a bunch of fighting. I think that the lack of action has alienated part of the Marvel fandom, for better or for worse. Early on in the episode, we get another flashback scene in 1998, where we sort of get some backstory on Fury and his wife. We see what I assume is the first time they meet each other, but other than that there isn't much to the scene. And then in the present day, all we really get is the fact that she's angry with him for disappearing into space like everyone else is. So there isn't really anything that makes her get unique in our eyes, at least not yet. I definitely didn't trust her after the first scene, and after the way the episode ends, I think it's pretty safe to say she's working with Gravik. Whether or not Fury caught on to this will impact how this goes, but this could turn out to be a complicated and interesting confrontation. And if there was any doubt about the way he behaved last episode, it also seems like Rhodey is a squirrel too in the series. He definitely came off cold to Fury when he fired him last week but I think it did enough to make the audience think that it could be either scenario. Either he is or isn't a Skrull. But the phone call at the end made it seem pretty certain. And now that I think of it, that may have been the US government official in London that Fury mentioned to Talos, which would show that Fury is still at the top of his game, despite some of the other things we've seen from him that would suggest he's lost his skill and capability in his old age. What did you think of the third episode of Secret Invasion? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to like the video, and subscribe for more MCU content, and follow me on my various platforms all listed in the description.
Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you again tomorrow.